statement. Call your next witness. Detective Shana Willard. Members of the jury will probably take our first our mid morning break after this next witness. Your Honor, me, myself, and one defense counsel is coming to sidebar regarding the second witness. Okay. Not those Madam Clerk, you can swear her in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Ma'am, good morning to you. Just watch your step as you come forward. If you need a glass of water, let us know. We'll do our best to accommodate you. Um, if there's an objection made during the course of your testimony, just let just pause for a second and let me uh, rule in the objection and we'll go from there. Yes, sir. And you can adjust the microphone down. Open the connection, please. That said, state you may inquire. You're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Please introduce yourself to the jury. My name is Shannon Lillard. And who's your current employer? I'm currently employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And in what capacity? I'm currently employed as a JSO photographer. And how long have you held that position? Uh, right about two years. Prior to that, what was your, um, who did you work for? I worked for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And in what capacity did you work for at that point? At my retirement, I was a detective in the crime scene unit. And how long total were you a certified law enforcement officer with JSO? I was a police officer and or a detective with the sheriff's office for 25 years. And I think you had already stated that your last assignment with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office prior to retirement was in the crime scene unit? Yes, ma'am. How long were you a detective in the crime scene unit? Right about 14 years. Now, in order to be a crime scene detective, do you have to have any specialized training? With Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, most of the training to be a crime scene detective is on the job. Um, for me, I have an associate's in science degree in evidence technology and core system management, which in today's term is crime scene work. Um, I've also taken basic crime scene classes, photography classes, um, blood spatter classes, um, trajectory classes, everything that would help me with my job as a crime scene detective. So I've, over the 14 years, between monthly roll call training and the training that I received outside of JSO, I've received um, lots of training, along with the many, many cases that I've worked. Now, is there also distinction within the crime scene unit of who can work major case, major, major cases? Yes, ma'am. When you first become a crime scene detective, you, you're, you're still a detective, but you're only what we call a lead detective on burglaries, batteries, robberies, and shootings where nobody passes or nobody dies. The reason being, you've got to gain that experience in that first year of going to the major calls, but you start off with the more minor stuff, just say a domestic battery or just a a traffic crash to learn about how to investigate those calls. And while you're on those calls, you have a senior detective who is a major case detective with you on those calls, helping you get the experience and the knowledge to become a major crimes detective. And it usually takes about a year before you can be lead on a homicide case and, uh, and go like that. So it takes about a year. And then for the rest of my career, I was a, I was a trainer and a major crimes detective. Overall, and I'm just going to refer you, because at the time you were a detective, correct? Yes, ma'am. And also, too, when looking at um, some of the packaging of items, did you have a different last name? Yes, I did. 
So if we see the initials SP, would that have been you? That would have been me, yes, ma'am. And just for record purposes, was your former last name uh, Fister? Yes, it was. And could you just spell that for the record, please, ma'am? My um, previous name was Fister, P-F-I-S-T-E-R. And Lillard, is that L-I-L-L-A-R-D for the record? Yes, ma'am. So overall, what are the key responsibilities, then, of a crime scene detective? A crime scene, so the key responsibilities are we're the ones that are searching for the evidence. We're the one that's documenting the evidence. We're the one that's collecting and preserving it for future, as in coming to court, or making sure it's packaged properly so it can be taken to a lab and then tested further, such as if blood was find out, found on an item. I'm not a lab tech, so I preserve that item. Um, and then later on, the homicide detective would send it to, in our case, FDLE, for analysis. And part of being a detective in that unit, was it your responsibility to do any interviews with what potential witnesses? No. I didn't speak to witnesses. My job is evidence. Now, does a crime scene detective have a different vehicle than a normal, like, patrol officer? Yes, ma'am. Um, with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, I drove a GMC van that the whole back of the van was equipment and packaging materials that I would need for specific calls. I would also have my camera, my, if I was needed fingerprints, I'd have fingerprint kits in there. I'd have all the packaging, boxes, uh, envelopes, and paper bags like you would get at Winn-Dixie or Publix. And Detective Lowell, were you in the same capacity within the crime scene unit as a major case detective in January of 2019? Yes, I was. And then also going into February of 2019. Yes, ma'am. What, what year and date, what month and year did you actually retire? I uh, retired October 1st of 2021. And how is a detective within the crime scene unit assigned casework? The way we did it in our unit and my squad is if we'll say Detective James had just had a major case that she's working on, then I would take the next one. So we, we would rotate it so we weren't writing several reports all at the same time because you want to be able to focus your attention and your report writing after a case is done on that case. So of the, we'll say, eight people on my squad, we rotated it through the eight people. Now, is it common, depending on the nature of a crime scene or potentially multiple crime scenes, to have more than one detective assist? Yes, ma'am. However, is there always a lead detective? Yes, ma'am. And would that include also a lead homicide detective? Yes, ma'am. So I'm drawing your attention specifically to Jacksonville Sheriff's Office CCR number 2018-866278, where you assigned the lead detective work for the crime scene unit. Yes, there was. And was the lead homicide detective Billy Abbott? Yes, it was. Yes, he was. And is there constant communication that can occur between the lead homicide detective and the lead crime scene detective? Yes, ma'am. We're always in contact as much as we can. Nowadays, everybody has cell phones, so he was always, you know, calling me, hey, need you to come over here, are you available? Like on my days off, if I wasn't available, another detective on the other color squad would go and handle that. It's now, through your casework with this particular <coughs> matter, did it involve multiple days? Yes, it did. And did it involve a couple of different scenes? Yes, it did. So first one I'm going to draw your attention, um, kind of focus on Otis Road Landfill. Can you tell me about how you became involved in that particular location? Detective Abbott had received information that, the, that a dumpster and the victim could have been brought to that Lotus at Landfill and said that we were going to search it. So... That's how we ended up at the Lotus, or I ended up, because he had told me that we had, we were going to start our investigation, main investigation, at that Lotus, Otis landfill. And at that time, we went out there to see what the area looked like and to get a game plan and together how we were going to search a, a dump. It's, uh, the Otis landfill is a landfill. Think of what a landfill looks like and, you know, mounds of trash. So we had to get a game plan on how we were going to actually search 
um, for evidence and everything else in this case. Now, Detective Lillard, <coughs> how many days approximately were you in the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office at the Otis Road landfill? I believe altogether 16. Would that include the weekends? We took the weekends off. Now, Detective Lillard, is Otis Road Landfill located here in Duval County, Florida? Yes, ma'am, it is. Were you there every day that JSO conducted a search at Otis Road Landfill? Yes, ma'am. I was there um, around about 5 a.m. every single morning. I was the first person, besides the officer that was maintaining security on that, that mountain of trash, I was the first person in the morning taking photographs, and I was the last person leaving every single night, minus the person maintaining scene security overnight. Um, so I was the first and last one. So I would get up there at 5 a.m., and some days I didn't leave till 6 o'clock in the evening or later. And Detective Lord, were photographs taken to memorialize each day that JSO searched um, for this missing victim? Yes, ma'am. I began taking photos in the morning with my issued camera through JSO. Um, I had the first day we had the air unit come out and take photographs of what the scene looked like prior to any excavation taking place. And we also had the JSO drone unit come out and take additional aerial photographs of the area. So we took photographs in the morning of what it looked like before we started excavating. And then we had photos taking at the end of the day to show what the scene looked like prior to leaving for the evening. Now you just mentioned about the excavating, ma'am. Did did the individuals that did that aspect, were they actually employees of the Otis Road Landfill? Yes, they were. Now, people that were participating, though, in the search, were those members of JSO? The, the individuals that were actually doing the sifting through the various piles that we had excavated and set up in a search area, they were all JSO employees. They were either corrections officers or they were certified police officers or detectives. And did you try to memorialize how the operation occurred during these 16 days? Yes, ma'am. I would take, throughout the day, I would take various photographs of the excavator pulling um, trash debris from the, from the dig site to bring it up onto our search area, which we had a large area combed off and cleaned every single night before we started the next day. And we would set it in rows of piles that were manageable for people to look through instead of just one big pile going through it. We had them in very small, three to six at, at a time searching. And so we would do that and I would take photos of officers working. I would take photographs of from above the, the hill is what I called it, looking down where we were excavating. And then I would go to the bottom of the hill and photograph it upward so you could see the progress we were making each day and how deep the hole got by the, the last day we were there. Now, Detective Lillard, was January the 15th, 2019, the first day of the actual search? Yes, ma'am, it was. Now, we're going to go through some photographs, what's now been a composited states one. We'll go through some pretty quickly, and then we'll do some a little bit slower. So I'm showing you states evidence 1A. Can you just tell us what we're looking at? That is an aerial view of the Otisville landfill. Now, could you kind of circle the area of concentration that JSO was looking for IS? We were right in that area. So when you say right in that area, would, would you agree that's approximately in the middle of the, of the land mass of Otis Road? Yes, ma'am. And this is just an overview aerial from Google Earth showing the extent of how large Otis Road Landfill is. Yes, ma'am. This isn't one that we've taken. This appears to be Google Earth. And next, I'm showing you state's evidence 1B. That is the sign outside of Otis Road Landfill. I'm taking that photograph as I'm on Otis Road right at the entrance to the landfill. And next in state's evidence 1C. This is just me looking, the actual dig site, if I can draw on it. Yes, of course. Is more right in that area. That's just as we were driving up. Okay. 
And next I'm showing you state's evidence 1D you could describe. That is the top of the hill that we were actually doing the search. Um, the employees of Lotusville Landfill had cleared off the top because once they've put their trash or debris from construction, most of this is like construction um, type debris. It's not like the landfill on 301 where it's household trash. This is mostly building materials and business type trash. It's not necessarily you're going to have whole refrigerators of you know food and things like that. So this landfill did not have that strong odor of you know, you think a closed refrigerator would be. This was a relatively very clean landfill with construction equipment. So once they finished laying all the trash and, and compacting it down, they would put dirt on top. And this is the top of that mountain where they had cleared it and made it very nice for us once we began our dig on the 15th. And again, and I'm going to go a little quicker here, just some other images, what you were just describing in States 1E. States 1F and States 1G. I'm just showing the area that, the smoother areas where we actually did our searching, where the excavator would bring the piles of debris and set them in those rows, like I explained earlier. And this is just on the edge of the rows at the road that comes up to where we were. The little red building is like a spotter that makes sure nobody's coming or going to get hit by a car because it's still an active landfill while we were there. They just were not dumping debris anywhere near where we were up on the top. And I just kind of brought up a, 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 my, a question <coughs> that I have for you, Detective Lillard. The area that you all are sifting through with assistance from Otis Road, did that area come from the management of Otis Road Landfill? Yes, ma'am. And state's evidence 1H, 1I, 1J, 1K. Can you describe what we're looking at? What you're looking at now is what the landfill looked like once we started. Those cones, that's our area of interest working towards the, the bottom of the debris pile and how as level as it can be for, for trash, that's, where, that's the, where we started. And again, it states 1L, 1M, 1N. Can you describe what we're looking at? In this photograph, I'm at the bottom of the debris pile, photographing up. You can see where the excavator is. I had him positioned there, so that was our beginning point where we were going to start excavating. And I'm photographing in an upward direction towards him. And then states 1O, can you describe what we're looking at? In this photograph, we've, the excavator has already removed several piles of uh, debris, and the patrol officers or correctional officers are beginning their sifting through the debris piles. And again, is this just a closer view of JSO personnel going through the debris piles in 1P? Yes, ma'am. And then in 1Q, can you describe what type of tools they're using? In this, because it's, it's heavy construction equipment, a, we're using heavy rakes, the, the heavy metal rakes, and some shovels, and we're, they're sifting through and, and pulling through things to remove the top layer to get to any items that would be underneath the layers of, of um, debris. Just think of going through your trash, you can do it with your hand, so you, you, know, you, you drop something in there a receipt that you're looking for, you would slowly go through the trash. Well, we're doing that same type thing, but with rakes. We're going slowly from the top to the bottom. Now, was there any guidance to the other JSO personnel of what to look for? Yes, ma'am. Prior to um, beginning our digging each day, we had a briefing down at the, the bottom of the search area. And either myself or one of the detectives would tell them, this is what we're looking for. We told them we could be looking for bones because the, you know, the landfill, if there was a body in there, it, the heat, it, the decomposition would be a lot faster than if it was you know, cold because this was in the wintertime outside. So we could be looking for bones. We're looking for a bag that might have contained women's clothing, possibly school books or things like that that would belong to a school age child or, a, you know, a 16 year old. 
A teenage child. Teenage child. That's Thank in you. High school. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I know there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. Yes, ma'am. And again, we're going to just fast forward a little bit here. One R. We're looking at some more piles. Same in one S. Now, can you describe one T for us? In, in this photograph, the excavator driver had already pulled some and was standing by until we had cleared, we'll say, the six piles that he had already brought up. He's ready with number seven, per se. And then once we had searched all those six piles that were already up there, a bulldozer would then push that off to the side, and then he would lay six more piles. So he's just standing by with a group that he had just brought up from the debris field that we were looking at. Now, and we'll see this probably in some, some drone pictures a little bit later, but when each time a pile is brought, is it put in a separate location from a different pile? Yes, ma'am. Again, states 1U. Is that just showing, of course, the dumping of an, the next pile by the excavator? Yes, ma'am. Again, in States 1B, same premise, States 1W. Is this at the top, then, um, of that landfill where you were grabbing items from? Yes, ma'am. That's the beginning of the search, and he was bringing it from the area of interest that we had started that, um, doing our excavating. That's him bringing that first one out to us, or one of the first ones out to us. Again, a closer view of, of taking items for sifting, and that's 1X. Now, in one, why can you describe this picture? In this photograph, we have uh, Coxwell um, employees of the Lotus, Otisville landfill, and you have some JSO detectives to the right. Um, they keep records of where they, they bring things, and he brought us to the area. This should be the, the search area that you're looking for of a dumpster that would have come from the rec or the the junkyard on Main Street. So he's, they keep records, and he was saying it was this area that basically your stuff should be if you're collecting anything from, from that dumpster on the time frame that we had. And in States 1Z, again, is this worker sifting? Now, in States 1A, A, was there something that potentially was of interest initially? Yes, ma'am. As they were searching, they found a plastic some plastic that had red stains on it. And when they found it, they stopped, called me over, and I be, be, investigated it. And I tested those red stains to see if it was blood. And what was the testing results? It was negative for blood. And again, it's just a couple pictures of, again, showing what you had done. Would this is include, again, medium viewpoints and close viewpoints of the item that you tested for potentially blood? Yes, ma'am. That's just showing a close view of 1BB, 1TC, 1DD, and then in, and then 1EE, e, is that the testing that you used, Detective Lillard? Yes, ma'am. Those are the two areas that I tested. Um, if this was, actually had blood proteins in it, I'm going to circle it. Yes, thank you. You see on, there's a Q-tip in there. What I do is we take a sterile cotton swab or cotton Q-tip, similar to what we would use to clean our ears, we put one drop of hydrated and distilled water on it, and then you rub the area of interest where the stain would be. And then I place it in this test kit, and then there's two vials on each side of the Q-tip with chemicals in it. When I pop it, if it does contain the blood proteins, it will turn like a bluish color, similar to the Jaguar blue. And in this case, it stayed red, meaning that there was no blood proteins in that samples. Now, at the end of each day, were drone photographs taken to show how much actually was sifted through? Yes, ma'am. So can you just kind of just describe to us so it will be a lot easier moving forward with the pictures of kind of the layout here in States 1H8? In the aerial photos, you're always going to see, almost always see, my van up here. Um, this is where my van was parked every single morning. In this area right here, that is our search area where we put the debris piles that was brought up by the excavator. And this right here was our search area. And then what about where the vehicles are located to the far left of the screen? 
the far left, this is one of our first days. They were still setting up safety and security and, and the medical station. So eventually you'll, begin, you'll see some white tents here. That's where everybody was decontaminated and rested, and that's where we had our uh, medical personnel that if somebody fell or got hurt, that we had medical personnel on standby. Now, did different personnel from JSO um, take, take different shifts? Yes, ma'am. And how long would a group do a shift? They were up there an hour or so, and then they would come back down and a new group would come up. We were constantly rotating them. Um, the manual labor that they were doing is very intensive. We were, it was very cold most days, and they're shifting through construction debris. So we wanted them to be safe, be able to get hydrated. So we were constantly rotating them out. In some, some photos, you might see a one of those four-wheelers. That's how we were bringing them up and down the mountain, because I wouldn't allow any other cars except for mine and maybe one of the canines that were searching. So I was limiting the number of people that could come up on the mountain. So you'll see those little full wheelers in some of the photos where they're bringing other people up. So we brought them up and down and up and down instead of bringing vehicles back and forth. Again, just different view, aerial views in one II, one JJ, one KK, one LL, and then one MM. Is this just a closer view of the area that um, the, the different piles of garbage was taken? Yes, ma'am. All right, so let's move on then to day two. And there's a lot less photographs from you on, just, again, just to kind of memorialize what you all have been doing. Is January 16, 2019 the accurate date for day two? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So in States 2A, I think you had stated earlier, again, when we're looking through your photographs for the 16 days, would you take photographs upon arrival? Yes, ma'am. A lot of times was the sun rising at that time. Yes, ma'am. So in 2A and 2B, was this how the landfill looked when you first arrived? Yes, ma'am. In 2C... 2D, 2E, and those couple of photographs we just looked at, again, was that just to show the status of the actual pile? Yes, ma'am. And then again, is this 2F just showing, again, more workers trying to sift through the debris? <coughs> like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And a closer view in states 2G, 2H, 2I, and then... Were drone photographs taken again at the end of the day? Yes, ma'am. They were taken at the beginning and the end every single day. Now, is this just help for, again, directional purposes that would be put down? Yes, ma'am. And when the, when the drone, um, I don't know how to operate a drone, but he explained it to me, the drone would start here and he would lift up and then begin to do his drone footage, and then he would come back and land on the same spot. So in states 2K, 2L, 2M, and 2N, can we now start to see exactly where that pile is located? Yes, ma'am. And can you just circle that for us? You can see where the, if you look to the left or the right of the red circle, you'll see all the debris are pretty much the same on both sides, but if, when you start looking where the excavator is pulling from, the color is starting to change because we also have some dirt in there that they have compacted, so we're starting to bring that, making a crevice where used to be this member in the first photograph, everything was pretty much at the same level. We're starting to dig deep into the ground. So Detective Lord, also at the end of each day, did you get an accounting of how much tons of debris have been sifted through. Each day, the uh, individuals with Otisville Landfill would give me an estimate of how many tons of trash we had gone through that day. And just to, to rewind for just a second, approximately how many tons of debris was from day one? If I can refer back to my report. Would that help refresh your recollection? Yes, ma'am, it would.
Edward Smushfield from Cox, at Coxwell Rent Landfill estimated on the 15th of January 2019 that we went through 478 tons of debris. Again, in states 2O, 2P, those are again just showing the viewpoints of how much tonnage had been done at the end of day two. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. Now, did you also um, receive how much tonnage approximately, you can just give me the amount, um, from day two that had been sifted? Just to verify through my report on the 16th, they verify or they estimated that we went through 420 tons of debris. Next, we're moving on to composite states three. Bless you. And again, just some photographs to memorialize it, not many. Um, do you agree that it was January the 17th, 2019? Is that an accurate date for day three? Yes, ma'am, it was. Just want to make sure for the record. Now, in states 3A, again, is this when you arrive when the sun is rising? Yes, ma'am. States 3B, 3C, and then 3D, again, is that, in 3E, is that again showing photographs of how the landfill looked that morning? Yes, ma'am. States 3F, 3G, 3H, again, are these further photographs of how the landfill looked on day three? Yes, ma'am. And on states evidence 3H, is this at the top of the hill that we're looking at? Yes, ma'am. Then states 3I is again, other JSL personnel shifting through the? Yes, ma'am. Through the, through the garbage? 3J, 3K, and then 3L, is this is some, again, another pile that's being um, laid out for the workers? Yes, ma'am, it is. And 3M, 3N, 3O. Now in 3P, could you describe what we're looking at? And this is, uh, I believe in the afternoon, because the sun's completely up. This is the drone and I'm photographing it as it's coming off the ground, getting ready to begin taking its photographs. And then in the drone photographs, again, direction for 3Q, and now, we, now let's get a little bit closer here, in 3R, 3S. Now, do we see, actually see your crime scene van in, this photo, in these photographs? Yes, ma'am, in the lower left-hand corner, you can see my, my van here, and the, the vehicle here is one of the Coxwell employees for the Otisville landfill. And would your van have been the only crime scene van at this location? Yes, ma'am. So at any point in time, if we see this van in any photographs, that's your crime scene van? That is my van. 3T. Now, in 3U, can you point out now where we're at at the end of day three in regards to how much has been sifted? And have you circled kind of in the middle of the photograph where you can start to see an indent of that hill? Yes, ma'am. And you just for the record purpose, you did circle two different areas. I didn't get it long enough. I apologize. Did you mean to, did you mean to circle? <laughs> Here, now I'm blue. The yes. whole area? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And the 3V, 3W, 3X, 3Y. 3Z, again, are they just showing further viewpoints of how much tonnage? Yes, ma'am. Now, the end of day three, what was the total tons of debris that had been sifted by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? That was on the 17th, right? Yes, ma'am. On the 17th, just verifying to re reflect my memory, 210 tons of trash. Now, moving on to day four. Four, and, and for record purposes, this is state's composite four of landfill day four. Would that have been January the 18th, 2019? Yes, ma'am. Again, just a few photographs from where on this day, 4A. Again, is this when you arrived and then the sun is rising? Yes, ma'am. 4B, 4C. Now in 4D, can you describe what we're looking at? That is actually a Crime Stopper sign that we found in the debris pile. Then in states 4E, 4F, again, is this just a closer view of debris pile? Yes, ma'am. 
Now, someone is pointing, before we get to 4D, someone is pointing to something in 4F. And what was that? Uh, the homicide detective was pointing out some paperwork that was found during the sifting by the officers that were doing the raking. And then as we get closer here, is that then what was found in states 4G, 4H, and then 4I and 4J and K? Yes, ma'am. This was ACE pull-apart paperwork that they had found in the debris pile okay. from May, on, on Main Street, the 2152 North Main Street. And did you collect those items? Yes, ma'am. In this photograph right here, I've actually put some um, clean brown paper down and placed those items on it and photographed them individually in the side of my van. Take a moment, please, and just look at state's evidence for you that's been stipulated, too. Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize it? Yes, ma'am. And are these the pieces of items that we're looking at in state's evidence for? Yes, ma'am. Now, just to understand first some of the packaging <coughs> of understanding, would you have used a clean brown paper bag? Yes, uh, each item of evidence, or in this case, the, the pieces that were located together, are all placed in a clean, sterile, never used packaging. We use paper so it, it's breathable. We wouldn't want to put it in plastic for long storage in a warehouse where it would possibly get moisture in it and mold. So we keep it in paper to allow the, the item to actually breathe. Now, there is some blue crime scene tape. What does that indicate? That indicates that when I sealed it, and I'll sign it, saying I sealed it and signed it. And then if somebody else opens it, they open it from a different location than where I sealed it. Now there's a white barcode with some markings on it. What does that indicate with this white sticker? The white sticker at the top is what the property room actually puts on it. It has the item number, where it's located in our warehouse, the case number, and numbers associated with the property room. So that's all of their information. The black, written in Sharpie, is the information that I wrote at the scene. And what exactly did you write on the bag? On the bag, I wrote four pieces of paper from landfill, ace pick apart in parentheses, and that's so I know what's, what's in the bag instead of just four pieces of paper because when we enter it into the property system, it's very basic. And then in the comments section, we'd put a lot of times what it is if it's not just one item. And I would put it in parentheses on the bag to help determine what was in that bag. Now, it's a little difficult to see from far away, but for later on purposes, is there some marking as well around that blue seal tape? Yes, ma'am. That is my initials and ID number. And what was your ID number? 5972. And again, was SP your initials at the time? Yes, ma'am. And are, I think you had already said these are the items that were collected from the landfill? Yes, ma'am. Those are those four items that you see in that photograph. And were they collected as is? As is. Detective Lord, looking in states 4I, where were you located? In the side door of my van. It's a, you know, a typical van has two doors on the side, one door in the back. I worked out of the side doors, so I had the brown paper right on the, the floor of the van, and I did those photographs there. So just moving forward so we don't have to describe again, at any point in time after an item is collected and we see it with some brown papering underneath, that just means you brought it to your van to preserve it and collect it and package it. 
Yes, ma'am. Because once I, I want to do it as more of a, as a controlled environment as I can. Because if you saw the one with the debris pile, there's debris. So I'm removing it from that debris pile, taking it to my van in a more secure area. I'm photographing it. I'm sealing that envelope or that bag up, and then I'm locking my van. I'm the only one with keys to my van, so nobody else can get to the evidence. Chain of custody for that evidence has stayed with me the entire time because I'm with my van. I, besides walking around the debris piles, I was in for proximity of my van with it locked the whole time. Now, was another pile of items collected in states 4N and 4O, 4P, and 4Q? Yes, ma'am. Now, were the items collected a little bit different in this situation? Yes, ma'am. I was, he found additional, I grabbed a bag, took it to him, or he put it straight, or the detective put it straight in the bag. Then I took it to my van and did the photographing and sealing there. I think after I, we found the first one, I had some bags that I carried with me. So if they found something, I could secure it while I'm walking back and forth to my van. You take a moment, look at state's composite, which can stipulate into state's evidence 41. Yes, ma'am. And again, is this what was found at the Otis Road landfill back on January the 18th? Yes, ma'am. And again, you recognize it from the same procedures that we previously discussed? Yes, ma'am. Your markings and packaging? Yes, ma'am. And, and you said, I believe, six pieces? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And all six pieces here? Yes, ma'am. Also on the packaging, would you put down if another officer had found the item? Yes, ma'am. Like, like specifically on State's Evidence 41, if we're looking at the packaging and we see the name T. Belvin plus a number, does that just mean that's the officer with their badge number? Yes, ma'am. And would you do that on different packaging if it was a different officer? Yes, ma'am, I would. So that's all that that means in the end? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And again, is this another picture of the drone in States 4R? Yes, ma'am. Now, the drone pictures at the end of the 18th. We've got 4S, 4T, 4U, 4V, 4W, 4X, and now 4Y. Can you point out to just, again, the progress of the indentation of how many layers now at this point at, at the dig site? And have you, sent, have you circled kind of, again, where it shows the indentation within the pile? Yes, ma'am. Kind of, kind of, a little bit towards, more towards the top, but kind of center, overall centered in the picture? Yes, ma'am. And did you ascertain how much tonnage had been sifted through on end of day four? In the day four, referring back to my report just for number purposes, on the 18th, they estimated we went through 270 tons of debris our trash from the debris pile. Ms. Sorry, French, Ms. I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I thought you were done. Go ahead. Did you say 270? 270. Ms. French, I'm, we're going to take a break now. Sir, Your Honor. Members of the jury, it's 1051. Let's come back out at 1115. That's 25 minutes or so, and we'll be able to take a good break. Uh, at that point, we'll go to our lunch break about the same time as the past few days. Please remember, don't discuss the case among yourselves or each other. Have a nice break.
officer, you're more than welcome to Thank you. that as well. See you after our break. Or after our minimum break. All right, the jury's outside our presence. I still have counsel of the state defense. Mr. Quell is present. You guys can may have a seat. Ms. French, I tried to go as long as I could, but that was 40 minutes, and, and you're just now starting day five. We're going to get 13 witnesses in today. We need to focus on the bigger picture here because if we're not done by Tuesday, we're going to have issues for a third week, and I'm foreseeing having problems. We're in our third witness today so far. Um, number four. I apologize. Number four. Um, yes, ma'am. Of course. Um, I try to go as long as I can, but 16 days, day five, I, I kind of saw where this was going. Um, I'll see you guys back at 1115. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, let's go back on the record. 19 CF 7518. State v. Jonathan Quellez. I have counsel of state defense. Mr. Quellez present. Um, the officer is back on the witness stand just as it was when the jury took the break. Um, we'll go from now until our lunch break. Um, hopefully we can get this witness done and maybe one more potentially, I would hope. But we'll see how long the direct and the cross is at this point. Any reason why we can't bring the jury in? First from the state. Defense. All right, let's bring the jury back in, please. Members of the jury, welcome back. Of course, have a seat. You guys as well. We can, we're going to continue with our trial. That you may, you may continue with your direct, just so the jurors know. Um, we'll go back. We'll go from now into our lunch break, and then we'll go from there, just like we had the past few days. That you may continue with your direct. Yes, sir, Your Honor. And moving on now, Detective Lillard, to day five. <coughs> Would January 22nd, 2019 be day five? Yes, ma'am. And... The difference in dates from the 18th to the 22nd, was that based on a holiday weekend? Yes, ma'am, it was. Okay. So again, states 5A is, is when you arrived and the sun is rising? Yes, ma'am. Again, states 5B, 5C. So when we're looking at 5C, can you indicate what, what the intent was with this photograph? In this photograph, I'm showing the progress of our excavation of the area of search. If you can see it's starting to become a crater versus, if you remember from the first day, first photos, before we started excavating, it was more of a gradual, flat, high area of debris pile. And now we're starting to excavate it, and it's actually forming a crater. States 5D. 5E. Now in 5F, can you indicate what this photograph is depicting? This is the area after the officers and correctional officers have searched through those piles is where they've pushed it off to the side. After we've done searching it, we have to clear it for the next six or eight sections of search areas. So once we're done searching, a bulldozer would push it off to the side. It's 5G. Now, in States 5H, could you indicate the purpose of this photograph? This photograph is to show that it's, it's clear of anything. Each night, we would clear it. The bulldozer would push dirt, um, and they would lay, sometimes they would lay some, gra not gravel, um, like wood chips 
on the top to make it a little bit smoother to keep the dust away. So we would clean it every single night to start the next day with a clean surface. Now in states, and I think in states 5H and then closer view in states 5I, can you indicate the purpose of the, these two photographs? Also in these two photographs, you can see uh, buzzards flying over the, the landfill area. What was the purpose of capturing the buzzards? We were advised by landfill employees that they normally did not have the buzzards because if you remember from earlier in my testimony, it wasn't normal trash like at the 301 dumpster where you would see all the birds flying over the, the trash piles. This was construction debris, so they normally did not have a, a lot of bird activity. They're going to have some because people will throw trash into the dumpsters at, at construction sites, but they normally did not have a lot of bird activity flying over, but we had unearthed stuff that had been compacted, so odors will start coming out. So they did start noticing some buzzard activity. So we took, we started honing in on where those buzzards were, were flying to start searching some more. <clears throat> Again, in States 5J, is that just another picture of the buzzard? Yes, ma'am. Now, the drone photographs, again, to, to indicate how much tonnage. So I'm going to go find a certain photograph here. Now, in states, there we go, 5S, could you indicate, again, the area to show how much tonnage um, had been done at the end of day five? In day five, it was approximately 1,140 tons of debris trash from the pile. So on day five, you stated that 1,040 tons. Is that total, or is that how much on day five? On five, 1,140, 1,140 tons of trash. And thank you, I had stated the number wrong. Thank you for correcting me. Yes, ma'am. And again, just to make sure our record is clear, on states 5S, did you draw a circle approximately almost square in the middle of the picture where there's an indentation of creating a hole at this point? Yes, ma'am. Now moving on to day six, which is also state's evidence six composite. It was day six, January the 23rd, 2019. Yes, ma'am. Again, in state 6A, is this a photograph when you first arrived? It looks like the sun is setting, the sun is rising a little bit later on. Yes, ma'am. The sun is actually to my back in this photograph. Um, I'm actually photographing towards the west. Because if you look where the excavator is, that's where the debris pile is. He's starting to go down into the debris pile to start bringing items or uh, piles up for us to search. Again, in State 60 is just now, of course, and during the day. Yes, ma'am. And do we see your crime scene van as well? Yes, ma'am, about in the center of the screen. Now, we see a... A little, it looks like a potentially a small pop-up tent with a blue covering. What was the purpose of that? It had started uh, at intermittent times rained. If you look at the ground towards the left, the, the darker mud versus the photographs from earlier, it was a little lighter. We had had some rain, so we had set that up, and also to get us out of the sun. Because believe it or not, it was very cold in the morning, but by after lunch, in Florida and in Jacksonville, it gets warmer, so we would need something to get out of the sun. So it served two purposes. Now, I'm just looking at the end of the day from January 23rd. So I'm looking at State 6M. Again, is this showing the status of how much tonnage had been sifted through total from day six? Yes, ma'am. And then did you memorialize how much tonnage was actually sifted on January 23rd, day six at the Otis Road Landfill. Yes, ma'am. Employees of Otis Road Landfill estimated on, that, on this day, we went through 480 tons of trash. Now, 
Next, ma'am, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Evidence 7 composite. It is photographs of landfill day 7. Was that January the 24th, 2019? Yes, ma'am, it was. Next, I'm showing you State's 7A, 7B. Can you describe what we're looking at in State 7B? Yes, ma'am. This is the top of the debris pile. The excavator is starting to go down in to start bringing some more debris up. And in this photograph, you see it had rained heavily. We have large puddles of uh, water in the, in the area. Now, in State 7E, does that give us a good photograph of the items that were used to sift the different debris piles? Yes, ma'am, you can see the, the rakes, the, the large metal rakes that they were using, and they were sifting through each layer of the debris brought up from the, the hole in the search area. Again, in State 7F, is just another picture of the drone? Yes, ma'am. Now, and just again, looking at the end of the day, from January the 24th, so in State 7M, can you describe what we're looking at? That is just an aerial view in the evening. You can tell it's raining um, with, with the drone, and you can see the crater approximately in the center that, that where we were searching. The excavator would actually drive down here and then pick up. And just for record purposes, did you draw an arrow that is pouring downward towards a larger circle area, which is the indentation of the debris pile? Is that accurate for the record? Yes, ma'am. And then at the end of day seven, January the 24th, 2019, how much tonnage debris had been sifted by JSO? Uh, approximately 205 tons. Next, ma'am, I'm showing you State's Composite Evidence 8, which is a PowerPoint photograph of Otis Road Landfill Day 8. And was that, ma'am, on January the 25th, 2019? Yes, ma'am. Now, in State's Evidence 8B, what are we looking at? In this photograph, this is a canine officer from Ocala Police Department. His uh, Dog is what is considered a cadaver dog, and he came to assist our agency in searching for um, our victim's body. And next in States 8C, could you describe what we're looking at? In this photograph, the dog and his handler and me are walking into the debris pile where the excavator is actually pulling the debris out of. We're walking down into it to begin his actual search. And did you take some various photographs of um, the canine, um, Detective King, and his, and his dog? Yes, ma'am. Then states 8D, 8E, 8F, 8G, 8H, 8I, 8J, 8K, were those all photographs then of Detective King and his canine? Yes, ma'am. And then in States 8L, can you please describe? Because of the buzzard activity and that we're not there at night, um, we had gotten access to a trail cam like the hunters use, and that is the detective placing the trail cam on uh, a pole right outside of the debris field that we were searching and it was pointing in the direction of our debris field in the area that we had found the or had observed the buzzards flying. Again is this then a picture of that trail cam in states 8M? Yes ma'am. Now we're also again like every day photographs at the end of the day taken on January the 25th 2019. Yes ma'am. Now, looking in States 8T, is this an accurate depiction of how the debris pile looks that was being sifted through at the end of Day 8? Yes, ma'am. 
And did you memorialize how much tonnage had been sifted through on January the 25th, 2019? Approximately 110 tons. Now in states A, 8, A, A, you had mentioned earlier about there, later on there were some tents set up. Do you see those depicted in 8, A, A for the record? Yes, ma'am. And is, can you describe what was the purpose of that tent? The, the tent, you'll see it in your right-hand screen, and you can actually see my crime scene van in front of the tent. They've set the tents up for decontamination for the patrol officers. Um, it was also our emergency area where we had medical personnel if somebody got hurt or where they could actually decom, get hydrated and things like that because they didn't allow food or drink onto the hill. And was that just another viewpoint of the trail cam that was set up in States 8CC? Yes, ma'am. It's an approximate view that the camera for the trail cam would show. I got as close as I could to show you the direction that the trail cam was actually pointing. Now, ma'am, I'm showing you what's been marked in Estates Evidence 9 is a composite of photographs from the Otis Road Landfill Day 9. Was that January the 28th, 2019? Yes, ma'am. And again, the passage of days, was that where a weekend had been in between? Yes, ma'am. I'm showing you now Estates Evidence 9A. Do we see that trail cam as well in this photograph? Yes, ma'am. It's in your approximately the center of your screen. I've circled in red. That's the pole that we had placed the trail can on. Again, is that on top of the actual um, hill of the, of the debris? Yes, ma'am. It's it's just uh, northwest of the air, the search area on that top mountain. I the trail cam was off to the side, so there wouldn't be any activity of us searching through the area, setting off that trail cam. We, it's off to the side. Now, in States 9C, did Detective King come back out with his canine? Yes, ma'am, he did. I'm sorry, that was on January 28th. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. And then in 9D, do we see as well... Um, Detective King, too, and his dog. Yes, ma'am. Now, in States 9F, can you please describe? In this photograph, you can see several buzzards in the sky. States 9G. Now it's moving on to the end of the day drone photographs. I'm showing you States 9N. Is this a... Depiction again at the end of the day of the indentation of the area that's being sifted by JSO. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did you memorialize how much tonnage had been sifted on January the 28th, 2019 by JSO? Yes, ma'am. Approximately 325 tons of trash. And then also, based upon putting that trail cam up... <coughs> Did you go back, because we have a different date here, which is January the 26th. Did you go back and look if it had captured any data from the weekend? Yes, ma'am. And did you memorialize those uh, pictures as well? I mean, keep those pictures as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, I believe this was the weekend, and I received a phone call from Officer Bejeda, and he had said that he had seen some of the buzzards flying. Um, I was still working my regular shift, not at the landfill, but my regular shift, and I drove up to the, the landfill and downloaded the trail cam photos to see what he had seen. So in States 9S, could you circle where you see a buzzard? Approximately center right of your screen. There's a, you can see the wings of the buzzard. Now, on this actual photograph, we see... 126, 29, I think that is part of the year, and then you see a time frame. Is that approximately when it occurred? Yes, ma'am. Because that, 
Maybe it looks more like an eight. Would that have just been off of year for the yes, year? Okay. It wasn't my trail cam, and I don't know how to operate them to verify the date and time on it. But y'all weren't y'all were there in 2019. Yes, ma'am, definitely 2019. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Now on state's evidence 9T. In this photograph, you can see the debris pile, and you can also see the buzzard. And then here's our debris pile where you see the arrows pointing to where the search area that we had been searching. So based upon state's 9T, the buzzard is flying right over the debris pile. Yes, ma'am. In the same general area of the debris piles where the buzzards were. Next, I'm showing you man's state's composite evidence 10. Was a 10th, and it's involving photographs from the 10th day at the landfill. Would that have been January the 29th, 2019? Yes, ma'am, it was. Next, I'm showing you state's evidence 10C. Did Detective King come back out as well to the landfill? Yes, ma'am. And do we see him depicted in state's evidence 10C? And approximately the center of your screen, you see Detective King and his canine uh, right at the top of where the debris pile would start going in, where the excavator would start going into the debris. Um, he's starting his search. We tried to do it first thing in the morning before it was all stirred up by officers in the excavator. We had him go out. As well as state's evidence 10D, we see his canine. Yes, ma'am. We had laid out, already laid out several piles, and the canine had gone and searched, or however the canine searches, um, each pile as it, before anybody had else searched it. He walked around and sniffed some of the piles. Again, do we see that articulated in States 10E regarding the canine? Yes, ma'am. In States 10F, and then... Kind of difficult with the, with the sun, but in states 10G. Yes, ma'am. Now, obviously, we're going to hear from Detective Detective King later regarding you know actions by his dog, but based upon some information provided by Detective King, was there areas of concentration that was also looked into regarding that debris pile? Yes, ma'am. Next, at the end of day 10. I want to show you states 10 T. Does this depict an over, overall view of what you've been describing to the jury? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And does this photograph indicate the different piles that JSO officers would sift through? Yes, ma'am. We had laid out smaller piles for everybody to search. Instead of one big pile, it was smaller piles. That way, if we had, depending on how many officers we had out there to do the, the sifting, we could have, you know, three or four here, three or four at the next one, three or four at the, ne the next one. Instead of everybody working on one, we could separate them and get through the piles. One second. And then in state's evidence 10Q, is this an indication then of the status of that certain area of debris that was coming from in state's evidence 10Q? Yes, ma'am. And approximately how much tonnage had JSO... Um, Worked through on January 29th, day 10. 410 tons of debris. Next, I'm showing you states composite 11 and involves photographs from day 11 from the landfill. Was that approximately January the 30th of 2019? Yes, ma'am. Now, I'm looking at States 11B, what are we looking at? Some of the piles that have already been searched, they were piling them up on, on the edge before they had pushed them over to the, the other side of the hill. And again, can we still see the trail cam in States 11C? Yes, ma'am. Now, I'm looking at 11D. Is this a closer viewpoint of how 
much feet now has been sifted through? Yes, ma'am. You can see the crater and you can see the crater walls. I'm standing on the, the top of one of the sides of the crater. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're looking down into the crater. You can see that it's, it's, it's rather deep. And this is another photograph of showing how <coughs> feet now has been obviously gone through in that particular area, 11F. Yes, ma'am. And was that another K-9 um, that came out as well, Alicia Bates and states 11G? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, this She also came out with her dogs and also did the same search as Detective King to the more searching to find our victim, the better. This is a closer view of um, Alicia Bates and her canine in the state's 11H. Yes, ma'am. And again, in state's 11I, a little bit further viewpoint of where she was taking her dog. Yes, ma'am. Again, in state's 11J, do we see Alicia Bates and her canine? Yes, in this photograph, she's actually on the outer area of the crater and she's still searching around the crater and then in the crater. So she, what, their concentration wasn't just in the bottom of the crater where we had already pulled debris from. They st also searched on the outer rims and to see if the, any, the dog had hit. Again, 11K, do we see Alicia Bates' canine? Yes, ma'am. Now, in a state's 11L, can you describe what we're looking at? In, in this photograph, you're seeing some Victoria's Secret bras and panties. And were these found there at the landfill? Yes, ma'am. In one of the debris piles that were brought up from where you see that crater is, as the excavator was bringing it out, this was actually located by one of our search members in one of the debris piles. And were all these items found together? Yes, ma'am. These were, yes. These particular ones? Yes. And do you take various photographs in LM, LN, LO, before then moving on to look at each particular item? Yes, ma'am. Now in states, and you, and did you collect all these items and package them and take them to the property room? Yes, ma'am, I did. And that included the one that we saw in LP? Yes, ma'am. And then LQ, would that be the same um, pair of underwear? Yes, ma'am. And would you also indicate, if you could, the size of each item? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And again, for 11S, 11T, 11U, and were all these items part of Victoria's Secret? Yes, ma'am, they were. Okay. Again, 11V indicating size, 11W. 11X, 11Y, was that associated with a, a, another pink in color Victoria's Secret bra? Yes, ma'am, it was. And then in states 11Z, AA, 11BB, 11CC, was that involving a black bra that was indicated to be a Victoria's Secret brand? Yes, ma'am. And was this a, another black brawl in part of that pile in states 11DD, 11EE, e, 11FF? Yes, ma'am. I think, yeah, I thought that was it. Again, was that indication of being a black Victoria's Secret ball? Yes, ma'am, it was. Next in states 11GG, 11HH. Was that also another um, pink color informed Victoria's Secret bra? Yes, ma'am, it was. Now in states 11, I, I in a different area of sifting was a, another bra found. Yes, ma'am. And do we see here in states 11, I, I the actual bra being a part of that area first? Yes, ma'am, about in the center of the debris po search pile, you can see the leopard print uh, bra. And was this bra also collected? Yes, ma'am. And that's also in states 11JJ, 11KK, 11LL. Were those part of all of that leopard print? And was that a Victoria's Secret brand bra? Yes, ma'am, it was. It was the pink collection. Now in states 
11 mm do you recognize that individual yes ma'am that is me at the top of the debris pile and what was the purpose um, at this time for being by the debris pile kind of show you distance and size I'm five foot tall in boots and I'm you can see the the crater versus my size so is it fair to say that the that the death now is greater than five feet it was a lot greater than five feet now in states 11 rr is this again at the end of the day indication of how deep that area is now that debris has been taken from yes ma'am and again at the end of a day 11 was it memorialized how much tonnage had been sifted through yes ma'am uh two approximately 210 tons of trash again just real quick is that again just an indication in states 11 tt how big now this area has become that has been collected yes ma'am you can still see me in the upper right hand corner that i'm circling and then you can see a detective and a canine handler at the bottom kind of gives you an indication how deep where i'm drawing the arrows we have been been searching and that before if you remember from the first day it was flat debris trash and now we have dug a, a large crater now i'm showing you states evidence 12 composite they are photographs of the landfill search day 12 on January the 31st 2019 accurate date for day 12 yes ma'am and states 12a is again this showing a pile of rubbish I guess to say that's already been sifted by JSO yes ma'am again in states 12b is that an indication again of how deep that crater had become Yes, ma'am. Um, those excavators are very large, and you can see how deep he's having to go in. He's on the upper wall, and he's digging into the wall, making it larger towards where, where our search area is. So he was starting to dig and bring further and further towards our debris pile. So we're just making the hole as large as possible. Now, at the end of the day, in states 11K, to memorialize how it appeared regarding that crater becoming larger as you, as you had just indicated. Yes, ma'am. If you look, I'm drawing a square, pretty much a round, almost a square, around the area that you can see where it's become a crater versus that first day when it was more of a flat surface. And... Did you memorialize how much tonnage had been sifted through on day 12, January 31st, 2019? Approximately 250 tons of trash. Again, in states 11L is just, I think, approximately indicating about eight um, areas of debris piles. Yes, ma'am. And we can see one team that's up there going through a specific area of a debris pile. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. There's, we always started closer to the pile and would work our way all the way towards the east. So they would start here where I've driven and drawn an X and work their way in this direction. So once they finished that first one, we would move that out of the way and we'd move to the next one. And we would constantly have a rotation of debris piles added and deleted at the Again, in states 11N and 11O, is this a closer viewpoint of the setup of how officers would arrive, where officers would take breaks, that type of thing that we talked about earlier? Yes, ma'am. That's there where they would have lunch, get high hydrated, get hydrated, and medical was right there. And also, do we see in states 11N, you had talked about 
four wheelers. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Those are the two four wheelers that would bring people and equipment up and down the the mountain per se. Next state's evidence, 13 composites from landfill day 13. Would that have been on February the 1st, 2019? Yes, ma'am. Now, in state's 13C, is again, is just showing an angle of the depth of that crater now that has enlarged. Yes, ma'am. I'm just going to kind of go straight to the end of the day in state 13J. Again, at end of day, <coughs> bless you. At the end of the day on state 13J, is this again just an, to memorialize how that crater looked at the end of day 13? Yes, ma'am. And did you memorialize how much tonnage had been sifted through on day 13, which was February the 1st? Approximately 190 tons. Next, I'm showing you state's evidence, 14 composite. It's photographs of the search at Otis Road landfill in day 14. And is February the 4th, 2019, the correct date for day 14? Yes, ma'am, it is. And had another weekend passed since coming to this date? Yes, ma'am. Now in states, evidence 14F, 14G, and then 14H was another item of interest found. Yes, ma'am. In that pile, you can see the detective looking down at the ground, and that is a, another pair of uh, panties. And closer view in states 14I, and then, again, for packaging purposes in 14J. Yes, ma'am. And were you able to determine what brand these panties were? Victoria's Secret. And again, is that just indicating so in 14K? Yes, ma'am. And then we don't see any pictures, but we see a picture then of a, of a pink bra in states 14L. Can you kind of tell us how we got to this point? Uh, I actually found it and didn't take the overall photograph. I collected it and took it back to my van and did the close-ups. And that would be then 14L, 14M, and did it indicate what brand it was? It is Victoria's Secrets. Now, can you describe what we're looking at in States 14N? In this photograph, you can actually see my van to the left, the, the front drive, uh, passenger side front corner. And then I'm at the bottom of the debris search area, and you can see the width and how much debris we had gone through by this day. Now in states starting at 14R, now in 14S, start off with the overall view, was some more items found that had the brand Victoria's Secret. Yes, my members of the search team had located additional Victoria's Secrets bras in one of the search debris piles. And did that include, a, looks like a, a khaki type color bra in 14 -T. Yes, ma'am. 14U, a red lace bra. And then another khaki style bra in 14W. And then another khaki style bra in 14Y. Were those all the items found together? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, my question was wrong. Were they found together? Yes, ma'am. They're found in the, in the same area together in one of the debris piles that were brought up from that crater area. And did you package them and collect them and put and preserve them in the JSO property room? Yes, ma'am, I did. Now, in states 14BB, leading up then to 14CC, 
was another item of potential interest discovered. Yes, ma'am. In that photograph, if you remember the longer range photo, you can see two detectives looking at the ground. That's a lot of times what they did when they found something. They would stand over it and then I would come up because I might not have been right there at the time. Because while they were doing the searching, I was still going down in the debris hole looking for potential evidence before it was brought up too. So sometimes they would have to wait till I could get up there to do the photo photography. So that's it. in this photograph, you see the bra approximately in the center of your screen, which I'm circling, and you can see the detective's feet in the photograph. A closer view then of that um, bra in states 14 DD, and then in states 14 EE, did you turn the bra over? Yes, ma'am, that's the interior side of the, the bra. Now, was the full bra found? No. Was it just one side, one side of it? Yes, it would have been one cup of the bra. And was it Victoria's Secret brand? Yes, ma'am, it was. Again, in states 14 FF, is that just indicating, again, the brand and the size? Yes, ma'am. Now, at the end of day 14 in states 14 LL, again, is this to say indication of how the debris pile looked and the depth of it at the end of that day. Yes, ma'am. And you memorialized how much tonnage was sifted by JSO personnel on the end of day 14? Approximately 309 tons. Next, I'm showing you state's composite 15 for record purposes. It's a composite of photographs from landfill day 15. It's February the 5th, 2019, an accurate date for day 15. Yes, ma'am, it is. <coughs> now, we obviously jumped from 15E then to 15F with some other um, bras found as well on this particular day. Yes, ma'am. And are we looking at one of those, it looks like a, a lighter color, maybe khaki or a light pink color in states F 15F? Yes, ma'am. And in states 15G, did it also indicate it was a Victoria's Secret brand? Yes, ma'am. And then in states 15H, did you also find it looks like maybe a, a hot pink color bra? Yes, ma'am. And... It says pink. Is that a form of Victoria's Secret brand in states 15I? Yes, ma'am. Pink is one, a collection of Victoria's Secrets, the pink collection. Now, at the end of day 15 in states 15Q, does this kind of indicate now that that crater has actually expanded in width as well? Yes, ma'am. We started started our narrow search and then once we had a crater we started expanding it in an outwardly direction more of a, a square as you can get on a debris pile and with an excavator and it got larger and larger and larger as the days went by and then at the end of day 14 excuse me day excuse me end of day 15 february the 5th did you memorialize how much tonnage jso personnel had sifted through Approximately 230 tons of trash. Moving on, I know it's been a lot of days here, our last day at the landfill. Um, in state's evidence, 16 is a composite photographs of, from the landfill search was that date February the 6th, 2019? Yes, ma'am, it was. Now, in state 16G, what was the purpose of this photograph? In this photograph, I was called over to one of the debris search piles by two homicide detectives. Um, I'm putting an arrow above their head. It's two homicide detectives, and to mm -hmm. the right and left of them is the search crew. Um, one of the detectives is holding a book in his hands that they had found. And they that were Detective Bidlick? De Detective Bidlick, and they were walking towards me to bring it toward to me. And then the female, is that Detective Dishman? 
And Detective Dishman, yes, ma'am. Were they part of the homicide team that had been assigned this particular case? Yes, ma'am. And is this, in state's evidence 16H, is this the item that Detective Billet was holding in the previous photograph? Yes, ma'am. It's an Ethan Frome book from a library. And was there indication in state 16I, and then, of course, upon your review of it, of a particular place that it came from? That it came from Terry Parker High School. Did you collect that book like all the other items that we have discussed? Yes, ma'am. And in state 16J, is this the opposite side of that book? Yes, ma'am, it is. Next, in state 16K, as we, of course, don't have an indication at the exact location, was this also a brawl that was found at the landfill? Yes, ma'am. A lot of times when I was doing my photography of some individual items, um, detectives were just bringing me items, so sometimes things will be, you won't see that overall view like I would have liked it. Um, so sometimes it was brought directly to me and I would just photograph it to memorialize it. And it's not a great photo, it was kind of blurry. I apologize to the jury for that. And then in state 16L, and what brand was it? It was a Victoria's Secret from the Pink Collection. And did you collect that brawl as well? Yes, ma'am. Now, at the end of the last day, is that just, again, that's a, is that a picture of you in State 16V of, of where your van was located? Yes, ma'am. It's me walking away from the, I mentioned earlier that I worked out of the side of my van, and that's me walking away from the side doors of my van. Now, in State 16Q, is this the area um, you said you were trying to do like a square indication of how um, it looked at the end of day 16? Yes, ma'am. And did you memorialize how much tonnage had gone <coughs> through on day 16? Approximately 300 tons of debris. So in just a, a review of the, of the 16 days that JSO was at the landfill, there were, were, there were items of Ace Pick Apart that were found, the paperwork? Yes, ma'am. Um, there was multiple items from Victoria's Secret, is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. Um, and there was a Terry Parker book? Yes, ma'am. And I think at some point, we didn't, it wasn't an indication on photograph, was there some bones found that ended up being animals? Yes, ma'am. Several animal bones were found. Um, and just for verification, I looked at them, but then they were taken to our medical examiner by detectives for verification that they were animal bones and not human bones. In, in these debris piles, there was not a lot of clothing. There was not a lot of things like that. It was construction tri trash. We did find, you know, the clothing that you've obviously seen on the photographs, but we didn't find any other items of clothing. We found these bras with these panties. So just to be clear, you weren't seeing, obviously, in the photographs, you know, indicate exactly what was there, obviously. But what you mean is you're not seeing, like, thrown away pants or shorts or tank tops, that type of thing? No, ma'am, we were not seeing that. Just the Victoria's Secret items? Yes, ma'am. Now, I think it's an obvious question, though. Was there any remains found of IS? No, there was not. And did JSO have to end the search on day 16? Yes, ma'am. And was that based upon how much personnel and time had to be dedicated to each day? Yes, ma'am, it, it was. So at some point, JSO had to call off the search? Yes, ma'am. Because just to be clear, there would have been more areas to have searched. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. The, the, we could have searched the entire landfill that had trash had been dumped over the months and months and months. Um, we, our search was in the area that the landfill records had said that those dumpsters from Ace Pull Apart would have gone. We went in that area and then we went beyond on the outside. Um, if we could have, we would have kept searching, but there's, everything comes to an end. At some point? Yes, ma'am.
Now, ma'am, did you also, I know we had indicated earlier you went to some other locations. Now, did you also go to Ace Pick Apart? Yes, ma'am, I did. And where is Ace Pick Apart located? Ace Pick Apart is located up on the north side of Jacksonville off of Main Street. Now, I'm just going to show you a couple photographs. Not many. You to let us know if you recognize, and I'm showing you what's been marked as a composite states 20. Do you recognize states 20A? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, on the bottom portion of your screen, that is actually Main Street. Where the car is, that is the southbound lane of Main Street. And the Ace Pull Apart is on the west side of Main Street. And is Ace Pick Apart um, at 921 North Main Street? Yes, ma'am. Here in Duval County, Florida? Yes, ma'am. Now, did detectives <coughs> also, and we'll again, we'll hear from K-9 King later, a K-9 was brought to Ace Pick Apart? Yes, ma'am. And did the dog hit or alert on some different vehicles at that location? Yes, ma'am. I was advised by homicide detectives that they had already searched it prior to calling for me, so they brought me to the areas that the dog had had a hit on, and that's when I did a more extensive search on that vehicle or area. And now, and then, and after being at Ace Pick Apart, were you also then asked to take some photographs of a red Chrysler Town & Country minivan? Yes, ma'am. Now, were you asked to photograph this van because it had been previously owned by the defendant, Jonathan Quillez, in this case? Yes, ma'am, I was. How, and I'm showing you, State 721, just for record purposes, are photographs of, a, of, the, of the red van. It's a composite. Now, before we talk about um, composite 21, however, did you go to a different location regarding this van? Yes, ma'am. And what location was that? Referring back to my report to get the correct numerical, it was 1734 Hiram Street. And that's not where the defendant had lived at the time? No, ma'am. That is the, the residence of the person who bought the, the vehicle. In State 721A, is this a photograph of, of how you viewed the van when you arrived? Yes, ma'am. It was uh, backed into the fenced in yard of the residence. Then states 21B, and I'm just going to go through these, you know, I'll stop at one or two, but did you take overall photographs of the van? Yes, ma'am. I took overall photographs of the van, all four sides, and in, into the interior. Again, in states 21C, are we looking at the driver's side? That's the driver's side of the, the minivan with the, the rear slide, or the, the sl rear slide open. And then are we looking at the back of the van in States 21D? Yes, ma'am. And then are we looking at the passenger side in States 21E? Yes, ma'am. Now that you said you had taken some interior photographs as well in 21F? Yes, ma'am. This is overall photographs of the driver's compartment. And then and as well, is this the passenger area of interior purposes in 21G? Yes, ma'am. That would be the center where the, the center seats of the minivan are. Now, regarding the interior aspect of the minivan, did you test any for any particular areas of interest? Yes, ma'am. Inside the vehicle, there were several brown stains, and I tested those using that same hematit test kit that you saw at the landfill, and none of those stains tested positive for blood proteins. And again, in States 21H, is this then the rear with the hatch open? Yes, ma'am. That's the rear cargo hatch area. And again, is this some of the, in States 21I, some of the brownish stainings that you had talked about testing? Yes, ma'am. Again, in States 21J, an interior view? 
21K again, we're just, you're just doing a 360 around the van, is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. And there were not any items um, within the van in relation to the defendant, was there? None that I could find, no, ma'am. Or IS, is that fair to say? I just have one moment, Your Honor. No further questions, Judge. Mr. Davis, I'll get you a microphone as well. Good afternoon, sir. All right. So, if you don't mind, we're going to start off with you were called out to the Otis landfill, right? Yes, sir. Now, you were there approximately 16 days as you testified to, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were there from 5 a.m.? until that of uh, some time between 6 and 7 p.m. every day? Yes, sir, just depending on wh when we shut down for the day. Okay. Now, were you limited by the weather because of the rain and that, or did you guys work through it, rain, rain or shine? When it was raining, somebody would go to those tents, or if it was a harder rain, they would take them down to where their vehicles were, and we would sit in our vehicles. Um, but I remained in the, the area. Okay. Now... Over there in the Otis uh, landfill area, just to be clear, um, the area you guys were searching is where you were told that Ace Pick Apart had been dumping in that area, at least as according to the records. Ace Pick Apart didn't do the dumping. That was where it was brought, and that's where Ace Pick Apart's dumpsters were dumped. Okay. Now, are you aware, or were you aware, that Otis, as you said, that does construction, commercial business, all of that kind of stuff, right? Correct, sir. Okay. You aware that uh, the malls also dump there? It's construction, building materials, and things like that. That's all I knew. Okay. I Anything? don't know the specifics of where they collect their dumpsters from, but it's not from a house, from your household trash. Okay. It'd be more like your bulk trash that you would put outside, per se. Okay. Commercial businesses, though. Correct, sir. Okay. So, malls? Correct, sir. Okay. Specifically, the Avenues Mall, right? I, I would not know that, sir, but that is a, a mall, and it is... Okay. Town Center? It's, it's a mall. Okay. And up on the north end at the Rivertown Mall, correct? Yeah, they are malls. Okay. Um... Were you or are you aware that um, Duval County Schools for the bulk trash also goes to Otisville Landfill? Yes, sir. All I know is that Otisville Landfill takes stuff from construction type materials and things like that. I don't know specific areas. You would have to talk to the employees of Otisville Landfill to tell you where these other items are coming from. That is not in my peer view. Okay, so you wouldn't have any knowledge that Goodwill also dumps there or anything like that either? Well, if Goodwill dumped there, there wasn't a, a lot of clothing like you would find at Goodwill. We did not have that. We had mostly construction-type materials. We had Amazon packages in large rolls that it almost seems like they went on forever that where it would spew it off like you would get a package from Amazon. We did not have the large amount of clothes like you would normally find at the Goodwill. Okay. But... Again, you were only focused on one specific area. You didn't search the entire area where 
other businesses like Goodwill or anything like that could have, their trash could have been unloaded at, correct? Correct. We focused our attention on the area that Otisville Landfill employees and their records said that the dumpsters from that time frame of our search came from the ACE pull-apart. That's where they dumped that trash, and that's where our concentration of our search was. Our search was not anything that came from a Beaches Mall or a Regency Square Mall or the Avenues Mall. Our search was stuff from the area of ACE pull-apart. That was where we had narrowed our search to, not other businesses that had dumped trash. Okay. But you don't know if, by pure fluke, that some of the trash from these other businesses could have gotten mixed in there or a dumpster was dumped over there and the records weren't accurate. You don't know that, do you? I don't know that. I wasn't there when it was dumped. All I can say is the items that we did find, we did not find an abundance of clothing. The only clothing that we found was Victoria's Secrets. And I wasn't finding blue jeans and tank tops and um, dresses and things like that. We were finding the bras and the panties and the, the one book. That's what we were finding. We weren't finding other items, and that's why our concentration was on that general area. Okay. And you specifically um, mentioned the ACE pick part receipt that you photographed. Uh, there were several of them. But those were blank receipts, correct? Those were. There was paperwork from ACE pull apart. It would be, I, I would assume, where they start their record, their record keeping from ACE pull apart. That was actual paperwork from the company that owns ACE pull apart. It came from their company. It didn't come from the avenues because the avenues is not ACE pull apart. That came from ACE pull apart with the address on Main Street. Understood. But again, you don't know if it came specifically from ACE pick apart. All you know is. That is a receipt from Ace Pick Apart, correct? It was a blank paperwork with the address on Main Street, which was our where our concentration started from. Right. But again, you don't know if it specifically came from Ace Pick Apart and their dumpster, correct? As I'm saying, it, it's paperwork from that business on Main Street. Okay. Now, um... The cadaver dogs, um, you had more than one dog out there, correct? Yes, there were several that came out to assist us in our search. Okay. And going throughout that search area, um, the dogs did hit several times, correct? Correct. And there was nothing found, correct? Correct. Also, when decomposition of a mattress, you saw several mattresses and rugs, it can give the odor to animals because you think our skin cells are on those mattresses and so there, there was some and that's some of the areas that they hit on that were had mattresses on it. I'm not a canine handler, never was a canine handler. That's just what I was giving from other detectives that are canine handlers. So that's how I was able to get that information, that kind of information. And any time that we've ever used the searching I've received the same information from every detective about what they can and cannot hit on. Okay. Now, um, you stated that there was uh, buzzards and stuff like that out there, right? There were buzzards flying over the, the debris pile. Were there also vultures? It looked like a buzzard to me. I'm not a bird person either. It was a bird that was flying over the debris pile. So whatever it was, you just took a picture of it because they had advised you it wasn't normal for them to be there. It was it, that correct, sir? It wasn't a seagull from the like from the beach. It wasn't a parrot or anything like that. It was a larger winged animal. It wasn't like an eagle with the large, large wings. It was like a buzzard that you see on the side of the road eating okay. roadkill. <laughs> and you stated that throughout the course of the search, there were several bones and things found, but it was not human, correct? Yes, it didn't appear human to me, and they went. They took the bones to the medical examiner, and the medical examiner determined that they were not human. Okay. And you tested several areas um, that had red stains and things of that nature, as was evidenced in the photo slideshow, correct? You're talking about the plastic? The plastic. There was other areas that were tested as well, correct? 
believe at the dump it was only the plastic, correct? That one? It was the only thing that had a brownish red stain that could have been possibly looking like blood. Okay. The other one was on the in the Chrysler. Okay. But so in 16 days, there was only one spot that you came across that may have looked like blood, and when you tested it, it was not, correct? Correct. Okay. And then um, in going through all of this, you found a book from Terry Parker High School, but you don't know where, what dumpster area that came from either, do you? I don't know what dumpster it came from. I can tell you it was in our area of interest search in the same general area where you saw that crater. It came from the, excuse me, the area that the Otisville landfill employees had said that that is the area that, dumped, that was dumped from Ace Pull Apart. And it was from that general cratered area that you, that you saw. Um, one thing, I, you asked about the other blood. Do you think that the items were that in this debris pile was compacted. Those bulldozers and front end rollers would roll it to compact it even further. We also had rain and other weather uh, objects. And then we had dirt and sand and other debris put on top of each layer of debris. So that's, we didn't have a lot of red stains and, and blood stains that we could see in the debris and dirt and garbage. Okay. No. When you were there at the landfill, did you just photograph anything that had Victoria's Secret on it, specifically because that's what you were advised to do? We collected any clothing that we did find. Any clothing at all? Yes. Okay, but you testified that you found blue jeans at a couple I of said we did not find blue jeans. None at all? No. Okay. And you found no other clothing other than those that you photographed of the Victoria's Secret bras? That I can recall. That's all we that we collected. Okay. And um, when you guys were out there with the canines, you showed several different pictures um, showing size and relation, like you standing off to the side and then the detectives down at the bottom. I mean, these, by the time you guys were done, you guys had gone through a good 30 to 40 feet of trash. I mean, this was a big, big uh, crater that you guys had created looking in this area, right? It was a, it was a large crater. crater. The final to total was 5,529 tons of trash, so 5,500 tons of trash. Okay. And through all of that, no sign of Ayana, correct? No, we did not find our victim's body, no ma'am. No, no sir, apologize. No, that's fine. And you found no blood? No sir, no sir, we did not. No trace of anything remotely related to anything that could have been contributed to a crime scene, correct? No, sir. Okay. In addition to that, after you left the landfill, you go to Ace Pick Apart at the direction of Detective Abbott, correct? When Actually, I was at Ace Pick Apart before we did the landfill. Okay. Well, I'm just going in the order of the presentation. Forgive me. So you went to Ace Pick Apart at the direction of Detective Abbott? Correct. All right. Um, when you went to the Ace Pick Apart, what date were you there? If I can refer back to my report. Please. On 1-8-2019. Okay, so you went there actually about a week and a half, almost two weeks before you went to the Otis Landfill. Yes, sir, on the 8th of January, yes, sir. Okay, when you went there, you guys searched, uh, or the detectives had searched along with cadaver dogs at Ace Pick Apart too, correct? From what I was told, I was not there during their search, so I can't testify to what they did prior to my arrival. Okay. There were several vehicles that canines had alerted to and things of that nature, correct? Correct. All right. Now, these vehicles, you don't know if they were involved in fatal traffic crashes or injury traffic crashes or anything like that, do you? 
No, sir. It's, it's a vehicle junkyard. Okay. So to the best of your knowledge, all you know is the canine alerted to it and you went there to uh, photograph or, or catalog it, correct? Correct, sir. Okay. Did you do any DNA swabs there? Yes. Out of any of those DNA swabs, did any of those swabs come back to IS? I don't know. I don't do, all I do is the collection and preservation. Any other stuff would have gone to the lab and it's sent by the homicide detectives. They, our agency keeps the crime scene detective one step removed from actually sending stuff to the lab. Our specific job is the collection and preservation of the evidence, searching, preservation and collection of the evidence. The detectives are the ones that determine what goes to the lab. We're just there for the documentation and the preservation of the said items. So I don't know. All I can tell you is the, the items, the brownish red stains in the, the red vehicle that I searched did come back positive for blood proteins and it gave a that bluish color on those hemodent like I talked about earlier that where it came back red that these actually came back the blue so it did have a positive reaction to um, the brownish red stains that were on the seat and a tissue I believe okay and you collected and preserved that correct yes sir along with a blue glove okay rubber glove all right now all that was done on just the one day that Ace pick apart correct the one day that they called me out. Right. You didn't go back there on any other dates? I wasn't called back out there, no, sir. Okay. What date did you go and photograph the Red Town and Country Van? Referring back to my report for clarification for my memory. That was on 12-30-2018. 12-30-2018. Okay. So approximately a week and a half after IS had gone missing? I don't know when she was gone missing. Okay, fair enough. Um, and when you went out to where the vehicle was, you specifically went through, you found no evidence of uh, blood, correct? Not in that, that vehicle, no, sir. Okay. Did you find any evidence at all? <coughs> At the direction of the detective or anyone, did you find ev any evidence at all related to this case other than being asked to photograph that red van? I photographed, searched the vehicle, um, smelled the carpet, smelled the seats for any signs of decomposition odor, blood odor. Um, to me, it just smelled like motor oil, uh, dirt, and mildew. So, no. May I have one second, please, Your Honor? GMC Envoy that you photographed. Detective, good to see you, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, thank you, sir. Remember, the jury is 1231. We'll take a lunch break. I'll see you guys back at 1.30. Please remember, don't discuss the case among yourselves or each other. Don't do any independent research and have a nice lunch break.
jury's outside our presence. I still have counsel of the state defense and Mr. Quayle is present. You guys may have a seat. Hey, what's on tap for this afternoon? Yes, sir, Your Honor. So we have we have nine lined up. Seven out of the nine we feel are going to be very quick and brief, closer to the lines of when Mr. Brown testified. And, and Mr. Brown was like 10 minutes. You yes. think you think seven out of the nine are going to be about 10 to 15 minutes? 10, 10 to 20 minutes, yes, Your Honor, because, again, we're just hitting one point with those witnesses. And the, the two lengthier ones that we believe would be um, Detective Porter, which would be a little bit longer, and then the longest would be SF. What's, what's the definition of lengthy for, for Detective Porter? Similar to this last witness, this last witness was two hours excluding the break. So the state, I think we would be no more than 20, 25 minutes because a lot is hearsay. Now I know the defense might obviously try to do some more on cross, but when I say lengthy, I mean just more than the 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 10 okay. extra minutes, yes sir. Okay, um, I'm just concerned we're not gonna get done in two weeks and so Judge, if this would help the court, I know two of the detectives, I mean, they're, they're, uh, one, one collected the, the two bottles from the closet. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying, I, based off my knowledge of the case, I know what's coming. And I know there's a lot of meat, a lot more substance out there than what we've heard so far. And, for example, SS. Um, just to let the court know that um, the state would be we have, we have broken up SS's testimony. Right. Okay. Into two portions, Your Honor. Today would we'll just be in relation to IX. Nothing in regards to the answer. Okay. Well, it, nonetheless, that's still going to be of substance left for next week. Because if we don't get the closing arguments by Wednesday morning, I have a difficult time seeing how we can finish in two weeks. I can let the court know that this based upon me and Mr. Skinner's evaluation, we thought we would actually get through these first four in the morning. So we're actually not far off from our time estimates with our witnesses. Okay, well that gives me some confidence. I, I mean, seriously, I'm not saying that just to the court stage, no. obviously. <laughs> I, I, I trust you in that regard. Okay, um, I was hoping to try to give the jury a four o'clock send off on a Friday. Um, that may not be possible. And we don't have the PowerPoints lengthy or anything of that, that's pretty much the basis. Others would be very short, a couple of photographs, not many. Okay, well, we'll run through them. I'll give them that break that I typically give every afternoon. Um, I think sitting there for an hour and a half, two hours is a pretty long time. So you guys have enough, anything else we need to handle outside uh, having a lunch break? Anything from the state? Yes, sir, Your Honor. From the defense? No, Your Honor. So there's not going to be any Williams rule instruction? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with all, any other issues after the jury leaves for the day. Yes, sir. All right, you guys have a nice lunch, nice lunch break. Thank you.